just off junction five of the M5 is Upton Warren. Now these shallow pools are actually full of salty water and that means you find salt-loving wildlife here, like avocets, coastal birds you'd never expect to see in the Midlands. And something else you never usually see, water levels here as low as they are today. So this sluice is how they control the amount of water inside this unique wildlife site. And at this time of year, the autumn, they would normally be dropping the levels a bit, but they've never been this low and they're going to keep on dropping. It's drastic action, but those in charge say it's needed to try and understand why this unique site containing plants and wildlife you'd normally find at the seaside is actually disappearing. Well, one of the problems we've got here, we've realised this, is that we're losing all the salt marsh. And over the last 30 or so years, the amount of salt marsh has declined. And it, it's a nationally important site for that. So we need to understand what's going on and how, how we can restore it. And by dropping the levels, we can then understand what opportunities we've got in the future for perhaps changing the water levels and saving the salt marsh. So what's going wrong? Well, over time, the water here is getting deeper. These shallow pools are turning into a lake. And a lake is just too deep for the wading birds to feed in, and there's no place for the plants that make up the very special salt marsh around the edges. Since the 1970s, about 90% of this unique environment has been lost. So this is the salt marsh, these are the plants. What have we got? Sea spurry is the commonest one here. That's a little low kind of greeny, the one with the flowers actually? Yeah, tiny pink flowers. And it's normally found on the coast, so it's really unusual to find it in an inland situation. By draining the water, the team hope to learn much more about what's going on here. They've installed new gauges to keep an eye on the water level and critically, just how salty the water actually is. And today I've been asked to help check the gauges. Now the water is now too shallow for a boat, so we just have to wander over to the gauge. Just wander over. Yeah, you might not be making it to the gauge. Yeah. Lucy, would you like to go and check the gauge for us? Yeah, should okay. I do that on my own? We'll just let Lucy go and get the gauge. I'm, uh, I'm going to stay here for a bit. She's much lighter. I think that's the key. A lot of muscle. Muscle's much heavier, much denser. So here's the probe. You can see the salt's actually started to erode it a bit. It's, um, it's that salty, this it water. Really is, so it's like yeah. seawater. Oh, really oh. That's amazing. All this technology will reveal for the first time just how much the salt and water levels here are changing. Between New Year and Spring we'll be able to sift through all this data and all the past information that we've got and try and plan ahead and the end result will be trying to work out what the ideal water level will be on the site. As recently as 1940, the water behind me was in fact farmland. In fact, those posts, they're the old fence posts that mark the field boundaries. And then quickly this natural miracle happened and it became this extraordinary, unique, salty landscape. It's really important, but if it's not managed, it could just as quickly disappear. The hope is all this work throughout this autumn will mean no more of this splash of the seaside in the Midlands will be lost.